Britain has now formally triggered Article 50 and so Brexit is underway. How do you think it might impact education ties between India and the UK in the coming year? That's a very good and very deep question. Uh, first of all, I think you said a Brexit is underway. Uh, and indeed it is. Uh, uh, Article 50 just very recently uh, triggered. Of course, what we don't know is what Brexit actually means. Effectively, there's going to be a divorce between the UK uh, and the European Union. Uh, at this stage, a big unknown is whether this is going to be a, an amicable, uh, friendly divorce or whether it's going to be a messy divorce. Now, if it was an amicable divorce where both parties wanted to separate, it might turn out to be um, uh, um, to both parties' um, uh, satisfaction, but it's basically the UK wanting to divorce the EU, uh, not the other way around. So in terms of uh, how Brexit pans out and what sort of deal the, uh, the UK gets, that's going to have uh, an impact and into what extent Britain really needs to foster its relationships with, with other countries, you know, for, for example, uh, India. Um, as far as uh, education specifically is concerned, well, uh, you use the word there might there in, in the question, and uh, that was a, a, a critical word because, of course, there's this huge amount of uncertainty, and um, you know, no one knows, knows the true answer to this. And at best, at the moment, we can, uh, we can speculate. Uh, but I would say higher education is one of the UK's um, uh, best industries, one of its best exports. And our higher education sector is an export. It's not the conventional sort of export. It's not as though we manufacture a good which we then ship off to, to, to other nations. Um, you know, we can have students physically come to, uh, come to the UK, but it's still effectively, in economic terms, an export. Uh, now, the quality of our higher education uh, sector, I would argue, is the world's best. And as long as uh, that is sustained, then there will always be demand for um, UK uh, uh, higher education. So from, from that perspective, um, I'd like to think you know, Brexit shouldn't prove uh, too, too problematic. But there are you know, many uncertainties in terms of um, uh, the staff at UK universities, at, at LSE. We are a very international university both in terms of the student body, but also the, uh, the faculty body. Now, we have many uh, non-UK EU nationals, and understandably there's quite a bit of anxiety among them about whether you know, if they have uh, you know, uh, long-term secured jobs. So if the UK university sector, not just LSE, but, but generally, uh, if that um, struggle, they struggle to um, keep you know, the best uh, quality faculty, then that could have a negative impact on um, uh, the UK higher education sector. Uh, but we uh, will, will I'll always try and be an, an optimist and I will hope this will be um, um, uh, long term good for University of London and its partner institutes around the world. Uh, there will always be demand for education by students, um, both in India and, and, and the wider world. So uh, that demand is never going to really uh, dissipate. And as the University of London, we are always continuing and happy to supply uh, the education. So from that perspective, um, I hope um, th things will continue well. Of course, the other thing is to note the depreciation of the pound. Um, University of London fees charged in pound sterling. And um, given most uh, international program students are resident outside the UK, and that depreciation in the pound is uh, a good for the uh, tuition fees of, of students. Um, so from that perspective, I'd say it's, um, from the student perspective, a, a very good thing. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure.